Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about the CC updatable encryption against the malicious re encryption attacks. I'm Yanan Li. This is joint work with Long Chen and Qiang Tang. We all know that the cloud storage are vulnerable. Encryption is a widely used, widely used method to protect the outsourced storage, especially for the private data. And the approach is quite simple. The data owner encrypts the data and then outsources the uh, encrypted data to the cloud server and uh, start the secret key locally. In this approach, the security of the data uh, depends on the secrecy of the secret key. Then, uh, why do we need key rotation? We know that uh, computers are vulnerable to uh, various malwares. For attackers, eventually it is possible to corrupt both the key in the client and the cipher test in the server. Then there is no security guaranteed. <laughs> key rotation aims to mitigate the, uh, this damage as long as the attackers cannot corrupt the client and the cloud server in a quite short time period. Most pragmatically, a variety of security regulations require uh, key rotation. For example, uh, payment card industrial data security standard requires the uh, credit card information stored in the cloud should be encrypted and key rotated periodically. Also, uh, key rotation can provide some fancy services like data sharing and access revocation, so much so that uh, major companies have deployed such encryption APIs for with key rotation. How do they do? Actually, they use a hybrid encryption. Let's have a quick look at uh, uh, this approach. Uh, the cipher test contains two parts. Uh, one is calm and the other is dumb, where the, the S is the data encryption key. For the key rotation, the client retrieves the first part of the cipher test, decrypted and recrypted with the new secret key, and then save the uh, uh, new first part to the cloud server. We can see that uh, in the cloud server, the second part of the cipher test keep unchanged all the time. Uh, a simple method. We want to know uh, that this key rotation method works. Unfortunately, the answer is no. Imagine that attackers uh, corrupt the uh, client at some time and uh, get the secret key CK2 and the first part of the cipher test C2 star. And then he can decrypt it to get the secret data encryption uh, key S. And then he try to corrupt the uh, cloud server. No matter how long he, uh, he spends, uh, once he succeed, he can get the second part of the cipher test. And then he can decrypt them to get the plain data. Uh, so we know that uh, the widely deployed key rotation method is not secure at all. So we want to know how to model the security of encryption with key rotation. In order to systematically study this encryption, people formalized a new parameter called updatable encryption, also shorted for UE. Let me intro uh, uh, briefly introduce the general paradigm. Similar to standard encryption, it includes uh, the key encryption, uh, key generation encryption, and decryption uh, methods. The cipher test contains two parts. The first part is header, which is a uh, short and a constant, and the second part is the the body is the real. It contains the real encryption of the data. The update procedure contains two methods. The client retrieves the header 
and run the regeneration method to produce a token and send to the server. The server uses the token to update the ciphertext body. Usually, UE has two basic requirements for the update procedure. Uh, during the update, uh, both the communication cost and the computation cost in the client side should be not related to the data size. From the general paradigm, we can see that the token generation is related to the ciphertext header. So the general uh, UE also calls ciphertext dependent updatable encryption, especially if the header is so short to empty, in some sense, it saves the communication cost with some other uh, trade-off. For example, uh, no fine grained update, ciphertext update. In this, in our paper, we mainly focus on uh, ciphertext dependent updatable encryption. This this general case. Now. We want to know how to formalize the UE's security compared with the uh, standard encryption. The big difference is that uh, UE's adversary has more capability. It's because of uh, it's because that uh, there is more than one secret key. Let's see the detail in the diagram. Here, the epoch denotes uh, a time period for the different epochs, the key is different. And the blue boxes values are crafted by the adversary. So adversary can uh, craft the key, the token, the server test, and the update of server test for different epochs. And then we consider the UE's desired security goal. <laughs> Since UE was proposed to achieve the uh, secure cloud storage. So naturally, both the confidentiality and the integrity are needed. The subtle point is uh, how to exclude the impossibility for each security goal. Uh, for example, uh, confidentiality is hopeless if the adversary can compromise the chain server test and its corresponding secret key. Let's see the detail in the diagram. We said the epoch E is a challenge epoch. Then adversary cannot craft the secret key KE. And in the epoch E plus three, adversary ha has queried the secret key. Then he cannot query the update uh, of the challenge server test in this epoch. What's more, uh, since adversary can derive the update of cipher test from the previous compromised uh, cipher test and its token. So in the Apple E plus two, adversary derives such a challenge cipher test update, uh, so he cannot query the secret key. Uh, for the integrity, uh, intuitively, we should, uh, we say that integrity is hopeless in, in the key crafted epoch. Here we omit the detail. Based on the big difference between the uh, UE and uh, standard encryption, and it's well known that uh, AE has a relationship, uh, the uh, CPA in distinguishability plus the cipher test integrity can imply the uh, CCA indistinguishability. We are curious about how the relationship in UE. Surprisingly, we found that this relationship does not hold in UE. Why? It's because of the adversary's capability gap. Concretely, between the confidentiality and the integrity game, there exists a, a gap uh, for the adversary's capability. That is, adversary in the cipher test integrity game cannot craft the token from the key crafted epoch to the key uncrafted epoch. But uh, in the confidentiality game, uh, this token corruption is allowed, except for the challenge cipher test header. So there may exist an adversary 
who fills the CP and the CTLC game, but he can leverage this capability gap to forge a new cipher test, which is related to the challenge cipher test, and then query the deep question oracle to win the CCA game. More conventionally, we design a counterexample, uh, which is CPA and CTLT secure, but CCA insecure. Now we introduce our design intuition. We start from a CPA and CTFT secure game and do some modification on it. The first step is that the update token contains some secret information, which is protected by the previous Apple key. Please note that uh, for the CTFT adversary, it cannot craft the update token and the previous Apple key uh, at the same time. So he cannot get the this secret information. Then the secret information can be used to forge a new cipher test, which may contain the challenge bit. So far, we say the scheme is still CTFT secure. Why? It's because uh, CTST adversary cannot get the secret information, then he cannot forge a new cipher test. The third step is the new cipher test can be decrypted but cannot be updated. This ensures that the scheme is CPA secure because CPA adversary have no access to the decryption oracle, then the forge the new cipher test is useless for him, but uh, CC adversary can query the decryption oracle with this fortunate new cipher test to get the challenge bit. Uh, so the scheme is not CC secure. We also notice that uh, there is a separate work uh, to show that this relationship hold for cipher test independent UE. Anyway, we have to say uh, for general UE, CPA indistinguishability plus the cipher test integrity are not enough. The CCA security is needed. Then we set forth to uh, check the existing treatment on CCA secure UE. We found an issue that is the existing security models ha have an artificial restriction. Uh, it is adversary cannot query the re-encryption oracle with malicious cipher test. Uh, why we say this restriction is artificial? The reason has two aspect, aspects. The first is in the model level. In standard CC and integrity models, adversary naturally are allowed to manipulate the cipher test but this capability is restricted in the UE security models. And the second is more important since such models with restriction cannot capture the, uh, an, a real attack. We call this malicious re-inclusion attack. Let's introduce this attack in detail. Here is a UE system attackers like the compromise the system manager may corrupt the cloud server and obtain the read and write privilege. Then he can inject a new cipher test to the cloud server. After a time period, the cipher test got, uh, got updated to new versions. Then adversary may corrupt the server again and read the update of the, the cipher test that he injected before. Actually, this attack can threaten both the confidentiality and the integrity. For the confidentiality, since the, the cipher test uh, C-form had a prime may leak uh, some information about other cipher tests, uh, say C1 prime. As for the integrity, we say attackers may leverage this cipher test to forge a new valid cipher test. What's more, we found the, the existing uh, schemes are vulnerable to this malicious re attack. Let's take the KSS scheme as an example. Here is uh, KSS encryption. 
it's it's similar as the uh, calm down encryption. The difference is that uh, the data encryption Y, the data encryption key Y is secretly shared into two shares, S and Y minus S. The header is the encryption of the uh, one share and the secret key, and the other share is attached in the body. The update procedure is the client update the share in the header with the new secret key and attach it in the token, and then the server use the token to update the body part. Actually, he only update the, the, the share in the body. We claim that uh, malicious re attack can threaten uh, both the confidentiality and the integrity of the KSS scheme. Here we show the threat uh, on confidentiality in detail. We said the epoch E is a challenge start epoch. Then adversary can craft the uh, cipher test challenge cipher test CEB, and then he can modify the cipher test to a new one, just uh, add one to uh, the share in the body. Then move to the next epoch. Ad adversary can craft the, the secret key, then he cannot get the update of the challenge cipher test, but he can query the uh, update of the malform cipher test too. Based on the update, he can recover the real update of the challenge cipher test. Then he can decrypt it to get the challenge bit. So the KSS scheme is vulnerable. Uh, from this thread, we hope to conclude some intuitive idea about why KSS is vulnerable to malicious re encryption attack. That is, during the update, uh, the malformed cipher test cannot be recognized. Uh, this point is quite important to construct a secure UE scheme in our, uh, in our work. So, uh, we will introduce this later. Our second contribution is formalizing the strength and security models. Uh, first, we remove the restriction to the, capture the malicious re attack for three security goals including confidentiality, integrity, and the re encryption indistinguishability. As our first contribution shows, uh, CCA security is still needed for uh, UE, so we also define the CCA style confidentiality and the re encryption indistinguishability models. The previous work have pointed out that the existing UE models are not clear to uh, capture the most compromised security. So we introduced the epoch notion to make it clear. Our third contribution is building a secure construction in our strengthened security models. We know that the weakness of the existing schemes is they are vulnerable to the malicious re encryption attack. Uh, to solve this problem, the main goal is to uh, resist the malicious re encryption attack. So, our idea is to enable the uh, UE cipher test checkability. That is, make sure only valid cipher test can be updated. Then, the first challenge turns to how to make the cipher test checkable. Let's recall the UE paradigm. The cipher test contains two portions, the header and the body, and the header is available to the uh, client with, who has the secret key. Then we break down the check into two steps. First, we bind the two portions of the cipher test, and then we make the header itself checkable with the secret key. That means the banded body will be checkable. Concretely, uh, let's uh, take a look at our construction, uh, Recreate Plus, uh, how does it achieve the two steps? As the name implies, Recreate Plus is built from the existing uh, UE scheme, Recrypt, and add the checkability. 
the request scheme is CPA secure, CPA CDNT, and re entry in distinguishability secure in the restricted models. Here is the request cipher test. It's, it's also a kind of come down with secret sharing. The difference is the data encryption key F1 to FK. A request uh, achieve this data encryption with a special tool called the Keyhomorphic PNF, which enables the update of the data encryption key. Now we need to add the uh, checkability. The first step is bind the head and the body. Our idea is to attach some information to the header to bind it with the body. We know that the body contains two parts, the shear and the data encryption. So first we uh, bind the, the shear R with the commitment. And in order to check the commitment, we also need to attach the opening to the body. And then we bind the data encryption with the hash function. It's okay to remain the, the original data encryption in the body. Then uh, the second step is to make the header checkable with the secret key. The simple, our simple idea is to, uh, uh, to use the authenticated encryption with associated data to achieve this encryption and uh, treat the attached two parts as the associated data and also attach them at the end of the header. The, uh, to check the header is only to decrypt uh, the AEAD. Now the self test is checkable. Then, uh, then the challenge turns to how to update the self test. We know that before the update, the challenge, the self test itself is checkable. Then we need to make sure that after the update, uh, the updated self test is still checkable. This is the request plus several test, the head and the body. And we, we know that the box three parts are modified during the, the last step to achieve the uh, several test checkability. For the, for the other unmodified uh, parts, we, we use the original update method to update them. Uh, now we need to update uh, the other modified parts. As for the opening, just uh, plus the data opening, it's okay to, to make it consistent with the, the updated share. And then we need to update the commitment. In order to keep it uh, checkable, we need to uh, bind the update of the commitment to the new share. So uh, it requires the update of the commitment equals to the uh, commitment of the update. So we need a homomorphic commitment. Uh, also, we, we need to update the hash. Uh, also, uh, to make it checkable, we need to uh, bind the update of the hash to the new data encryption. Uh, it also requires the the update of the hash equals to the hash of the uh, new update. So we also need a homomorphic PR, uh, a hash. The subtle point is that we know the original data encryption F1 to F key are a key homomorphic PF values. Here we here the hash is also key, uh, homomorphic. So. In some sense, we require the two homomorphism uh, compatible. That is the domain of the homomorphic hash is the range of the key homomorphic PNF. Uh, so we uh, need to involve a primitive called homomorphic hash from DDH group to achieve this. Uh, as for the security, we reduce the CCA security to the uh, CCA security of AEAD the binding and hiding property of homomorphic commitment, the collision resistance of the homomorphic hash function, and the pseudo -random randomness of the key homomorphic PF. We also reduce the cipher test integrity to the 
suffered as integrity of AEAD. And the binding property of the homomorphic commitment and the clear resistance of the homomorphic hash function. To summarize, firstly, for general EOE, we show the surprising relationship, and then we formalize the new strengths and the UE security models. Finally, we propose a new construction which is secure in our strengths and security models. That's all. Thank you.